What is going on everybody? So I'm making this video today because I have to go to a customer's house and grab a fish out of his aquarium. I wanna talk about why it's so important to select the right livestock for your aquarium. It's very important when beginning to have a saltwater tank or when you're just starting out to kind of plan ahead. What do you want out of the aquarium? Are you gonna do more corals? Are you gonna do more fish only? Um, and really do your research on what creatures can kind of be compatible with each other. Then you have a situation like I have today where this one fish is just terrorizing everybody else in the aquarium. It's eating all the inverts. Um, we can't put any other type of shrimp or anything like that in the aquarium, which the tank needs. And then in the future, it makes it that much harder to put, you know, any type of new uh, livestock in the aquarium. So always take your time when it comes to adding any type of livestock to your tank and really try to do your best to kind of find out what's compatible. I honestly couldn't tell you how much of my job are fixing mistakes that are easily avoidable and how many times I've had to take fish out of aquariums. It's, it's no fun. But before we pack up here and head to the customer's house to catch that fish out of the aquarium, I wanna take you to another client's house who is having a very similar issue. So see you there. All right, so this is just an example of a customer who you know, was new to the hobby, wanted to get some clownfish, didn't know much about them, ended up getting, getting them small and then they got big. And you can see here we have a Clarkie and a tomato clown and they are vicious. There's a damsel in there as well. So unfortunately, um, he doesn't want to get rid of these fish um, because, you know, he gave them a home, uh, but he cannot put anything in this tank. So again, be very careful what fish you're putting in your tank because he has a decent sized tank. could probably get more fish in here, but um, unfortunately, these clownfish won't tolerate anything else in here. All right, on to the next job. Let's catch a fish. All right, so here we are at the customer's house and I enlisted some help. How's it going? I got Scape the Wild here, Jason from Scape the Wild. And uh, I haven't told you what we're doing yet. We're catching a fish out of customer's house, but it's not, <laughs> it's a Melanaris wrasse. Why didn't you tell me this ahead of time? <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna have our hands full. So we're gonna be moving rock. We're gonna be like disturbing the sand. It's gonna, we're gonna have our work cut out for us today. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> now we tried fish traps, trying to get this fish out, but he's just too skittish and then fish traps don't work. We've tried like two different kinds of fish traps. It's just, it ain't happening with this fish. I'll be in the office. All right, all right, so there's the Melanaris rest swimming there in the back. He's good size too. And there is a lot of rock in this tank. Yeah, especially with the So by taking the Melanaris rest out, this tank has some Aptasia. We can put some peppermint shrimp in here to take care of the Aptasia without worrying about the Melanaris rest eating them. Plus we can put a harlequin shrimp in here to take care of all these little starfish that have just exploded in this tank. This tank has been up for a long time, um, close to 10 years. And this Melanaris Rass, <laughs> given how aged this tank in, is, has knows exactly where to go, exactly where to hide, and we're gonna have our work cut out for us. And I know as soon as I get in there, it's gonna bury itself, hopefully in an area where I know, so we can get them out, but. <sighs> Yeah, by taking that fish out, it's going to be able to open us up to uh, being able to put a lot more things in this tank. And we can get more fish in here, too. It might be a little so uh, Melanaris Rass will be picking on them, so we can get some smaller fish in here, too, without worrying about that guy beating them up. And it'd be kind of cool to put some fairy wrasse in here as opposed to a wrasse that gets that as big as a Melanaris does. You know, I see a lot of videos about people uh, saying how bad six-line wrasse are. Just picture Melanaris wrasse are just a bigger version of six line wrasse. They are um, aggressive to smaller fish or anything they think they can eat and um, definitely aggressive to all inverts. And they get good size. So they're just basically a bigger version of uh, six line wrasse. So I'm hoping right now we can just catch him without tearing the tank apart. But my gut is telling me we're gonna have to tear the tank apart. All right, so what I just found out by breaking down this tank is that there's a lobster in here which we were not anticipating, which could be also a reason why some of this coral and uh, this clam is not doing well because that lobster is probably picking. So now <laughs> we're gonna have to move even more rock to get that lobster out. So now we're getting a fish and a lobster out. All right, a bit of a victory. Got the lobster out. We only had to dig up the whole tank. <laughs> so heads up, Chris, it's gonna be in that corner. Oh. We are full blown. It is murk <laughs> murky. Cannot see anything. But we 
know he's in buried himself here. So he buried himself right where you're at. Give it a second to clear up. Yeah. Shoot. All right. So, how you feeling, Chris? I knew exactly what this was going to be. That's why I've been dreading it all day. Well, at least one of us knew. Yeah. <laughs> you got suckered into this. <laughs> all right. Let's let's let that clear up, and then attempt number two. So, thank God Jason was here with me because look how murky this tank is. We had to like literally go through all this sand because he kept on burying himself, but we have success. We have him. Thank God. There's the fish. He cornered himself and like Chris said, couldn't have done it. He was yeah. right here in this corner. No vision at all from up there. Yeah, I couldn't have gotten him without your help. Um, I'm looking top down and it was just murky to me. I was going by feel, but this is exactly why you do not want to like <clears throat> get a fish that you're not 100% sure of that will do good in your aquarium because you do not want to have to go through this. Like look at the buckets, all this beautiful coral that was in that tank that was well established. All this rock, everything had to come out. Look how dirty the tank is. On the right side, we get to do a very good deep clean in the tank, but it's stressed out. Everybody in the tank, all the fish are stressed out. Um, and. Nobody wants to spend their day off or whatever having to break down your tank like this. This was an absolute nightmare. So make sure you, when you choose a fish, choose wisely. <sighs> Thank you. So since we're in the tank and we've got all this stuff stirred up, might as well do a good gravel vac. And you can just see all the gunk that's coming out. So I'm just gonna do a partial one, nothing too big. We've already done enough with this aquarium, but I wanna get some of this excess gunk out and do a decent size water change. But just look at all that. So we were lucky enough to catch the fish in only uh, an hour and a half. Thank you. <laughs> and now Jason's gonna go ahead and bring it back to the shop where we can quarantine it and um, <clears throat> treat it and hopefully rehome it to uh, a better more suitable uh, aquarium. Thank you so much for helping out. I will see you soon. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and refill the tank and then I'll show you guys what the tank looks like after all of that uh, destruction we just did. Mm. All right, so here we are. The tank's starting to clear up a bit. It's not as cloudy as it once was. I had to rescape the tank because um, obviously I couldn't remember where all the rock went. Um, this is not permanent. It's temporary. I did the best I could do for escaping, uh, considering that the water was absolutely just murky. But the coral seemed to be recovering really quick. I was less concerned about the coral through this whole process and more concerned with the fish and their stress level. So I just wanted to get the, the rock in as soon as I possibly could to make these guys feel better. But um, Tang looks okay. All the fish, the clownfish, everybody seems to be breathing uh, better. I don't see any rapid gill movement or anything like that but um let me know what you guys think of the scape should i uh let me know let me let me know what you guys think of the scape should i keep it like this or should we come back and change it um again i try to clear up a little bit more area on the sides there so we have a little bit more area to kind of work with uh, let me know what you guys think of the scape i also added some filter floss to help polish the water a bit so when the water drains that filter floss will get all the little small particles out of the water plus i got the protein skimmer really dialed in so we'll be able to get all these little floating particles out of the water again the fish seem to be doing better i haven't seen the blue hippo tang he's probably still scared um completely understand but what is that uh we got the two bad guys out of the tank so hopefully we'll have a little bit more harmony in the aquarium and um this will be the first process of that now there's still tons of sediment that's built up on the sand now there's still tons of sediment that's built up on the sand but uh now that we got the 
power heads on and the filter going. Hopefully that clears up. Um, I'll be here relatively soon for a service. I'm gonna go ahead and gravel vac allow that up. It's an absolutely beautiful fish. It's just such a troublemaker. And this is why it's so popular in the hobby is because they are so pretty, but man, are they mean. All right, so we got the Melanaris Rass here in the quarantine tank. You can see him hiding under the sponges. And as we zoom out, this is where he'll be spending the next six weeks while we get him medicated, you know, just precautionary stuff. Uh, he'll get all his meds and stuff like that. We'll de-stress him a bit until we put him in his forever home. Now that he's settled, I'm settled here at the shop. Be very careful about which fish you choose to put in your aquarium because this is a pain in the butt. So it's basically just a cautionary tale. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please comment if you have a question. See you on the next one.